What's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the CPA Zone, the podcast where we discuss tax strategies and accounting tips for entrepreneurs and real estate investors. My name is Ryan Pulis, and our company, The Pulis Group, offers tax planning and advisory services for entrepreneurs like you. Whether it's bookkeeping, tax planning, or CFO services that you're looking for, we've got you covered. What's up, everybody? Ryan Pulis here with another episode of the CPA Zone. Today, we're going to talk about the Qualified Business Income Deduction. This deduction was created with the passage of the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act. It was to help to level the playing field for pass-through entities when the act reduced the corporate income tax rate from 35% to 21%. So the CUBIT deduction is available for tax years 2018 through 2025. It's set to go away in 2026 unless Congress would take action. There's been talks of possibly extending it. We'll really just have to wait and see what happens. Now, the Cubit deduction only applies to pass-through entities. That's your sole proprietors or single-member LLCs, partnerships, S-corporations. It does not apply to C-corporations. Now, that's because the C-corporations received such a large decrease in their tax rate from 35% down to 21%. Your pass-through entities don't pay federal taxes at the entity level. So that's what the Cubid deduction was created to help provide a benefit to other business owners as well. This deduction also does not apply to income from foreign businesses. So it has to be U.S.-based businesses. Now, the deduction is generally equal to 20% of pass-through entity business income. And there's certain limitations and phases that come into play once your income exceeds a certain amount. So for higher income taxpayers, the deduction amount may be reduced by a wages or capital limit based on the taxpayer's share of business W-2 wages paid and the unadjusted basis in business assets. So think your depreciable assets. So when they say capital limitation, that's what it was being referred to. It's the unadjusted basis in business assets. So unadjusted basis is simply the basis before any depreciation is taken. For tax year 2024, the wage and capital limitations begin to phase in for joint filers with taxable income of 383,900 and they completely phase out at 483,900. For everyone else, single taxpayers, married filing separate, that phase in starts at 191,950 and then the the higher end of the phase out range is 241,950. Now, the wage and capital limitations are going to reduce the deductible or potentially reduce the, the, the cubit deduction. And that new limitation is going to be based on the greater of 50% of your share of business qualified W-2 wages or 25% of W-2 wages plus 2.5% of the business's unadjusted basis in qualified property. So again, think fixed assets before any depreciation. Now, even though the deduction is related to business income, the deduction itself is not part of the business return. It's not on your Schedule C. It's not on the 1120S or 1065 for partnerships. It's reported on your personal return. So if you have qualified business income from an S corporation, there's no deduction on the 1120S, which is the return for S corporations. It's picked up and reported on your personal 1040. So let's, let's look at a couple examples and see how this works. So let's say, or our first example is going to be no wage or capital limitation, just the, the straightforward deduction. So Gary has eligible business income of $100,000 in 2024. He's married filing joint and his total taxable income is, let's say, $125,000. Well under the phase in starting at $383,900. So his taxable income is one twenty five. dollars That includes $100,000 of eligible business income. Gary's cubit deduction is $20,000, 20% of his $100,000 business income. Now, let's change this example a little bit and see how the wage and capital limitations come into play. So Gary, still married, filing joint, still has eligible business income of $100,000. But now let's say maybe his wife has a large W-2 and their their total taxable income is $500,000. So they're over that phase in. And they're, they're actually completely outside the range. 500000 is over the high end of that range of 483900 So now his cubit deduction is going to be limited based on the W-2 and capital limitations from the business. So we're going to say in this example, in 2024, Gary's share of the business's W-2 wages paid is $20,000. His share of the business's assets, the unadjusted basis, is $100,000. 
So his deduction is limited to the greater of 50% of W-2 wages. So in this example, $10,000, 50% of $20,000, $10,000, or 25% of W-2 wages plus 2.5% of his share of the qualified business property. So 25% of his share of the wages, $20,000, is $5,000, and 2.5% of his share of the business assets is $2,500, 2.5% of $100,000. Add those together, we have a deduction of $7,500. That's less than the $10,000 deduction he can use with 50% of W-2 wages. So his deduction is now $10,000. His cubic deduction is $10,000 rather than the $20,000 available to him if his taxable income was under the phase and threshold. Now, there's a second limitation that comes into play for certain businesses. So these are specified service trader businesses SSTB is for short. So an SSTB is a business in the field of health, law, accounting, actuarial science, performing arts, consulting, athletics, financial services, brokerage services, investing services, or any trade or business where the principal asset is the reputation or skill of one or more of the employee's owners. So generally think of your, your professional services, accounting, law, health, doctors, dentists, they, these are all considered SSTBs. So if the business is an SSTB, the qualified business income deduction is available only if your income is under the, the phase out limit. So the phase out starts as a reminder for married fellows at 383,900 and is totally phased out 483,900. For everyone else, it starts at 191,950 and is totally phased out at 241,950. So if you're over the top end of those ranges, the phase out limit, there's no cubic deduction available for SSTBs. Now, if you're under, the calculation is really the same. So going back to our example of Gary, let's assume Gary is actually running a dental practice, which is an SSTB. In our first example, when his taxable income's under the phase-out limit, his taxable income's $125,000, there's no change. His $100,000 of qualified business income is allowed at 20%, so he has a $20,000 deduction. However, in our second example, when his taxable income is $500,000, now he's totally over the phase out limit, he receives no deduction. So with a with an SST as an SSTB, he gets no deduction at all. If he was not an SSTB and another business like a, an auto body shop, then he he had used the uses the wages and capital limitations we discussed in that example. So to summarize, this, the qualified business income deductions available for tax years 2018 through 2025 for owners of pass-through business entities. So proprietors, single member, LLCs, your partnerships, S-corporations. Not available for C-corporations and does not apply to foreign business income. The deduction itself is generally equal to 20% of qualified business income with those limitations coming into play for higher income taxpayers. You know, the wage capital limit going to reduce your qualified business income. You have to calculate based on 50% of the business's W-2 wages or 25% of W-2 wages plus 2.5% of the unadjusted basis in qualified property. Again, fixed assets before depreciation. SSTBs, your specified service trades and businesses, are not eligible for the Cupid deduction when their income exceeds those phase-out limits. And that about does it for today. I hope you found value in this episode. If so, please leave a five-star review and hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time, have a great day. So that about does it for this episode of the CPA Zone. Thanks for listening, and I hope you found something valuable that you can take away. We are taking on new clients, and if you'd like to work with us, then go to our website and fill out the client intake form on our contact page. This can be found at thepulisgroup.com forward slash contact. That's T H E. P-U-L-I-C-E-G-R-O-U-P dot com forward slash contact.